Yeah, so so good good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this world. And today happens to be Deepavali, our biggest festival, one of the biggest festivals in India. So happy Deepavali to all of you. And uh, let me get started with my talk. I'm very passionate about RTMS therapy in stroke and uh, other neurological diseases. Today in this talk, I'll briefly talk about um, uh, our our protocols and its applications in stroke and other uh, neurological diseases. So obviously I have huge interest in TMS, though it contributes only to 1% of, uh, you know, my, uh, my professional work. Uh, I, 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 it is very satisfying. It is very gratifying that I'm able to help a lot of these patients who would have been earlier deemed untreatable, incurable, would be sent home saying that there is no, no hope for you. So such patients stroke and other neurological diseases, I think we are able to make some meaningful improvement in their lives. So it is very, uh, very uh, gratifying. So we have been doing uh, TMS therapy for almost now three years and six months now. We have treated around 1,500 patients, and uh, at least uh, patients who have taken at least 10 sessions are around close to 900 patients. And we have delivered more than 20, 24,000 sessions, uh, pulse uh, sessions, and use consume maybe 12 million pulses now, 10 to 12 million pulses. So in this talk, in this brief talk, I will talk to you about how we are using uh, TMS therapy in uh, in uh, stroke and another neurological diseases. So, you know, we are, and our team is in the process of quantifying these uh, results. So how many patients are stroke? Or how many patients are, uh, uh, are uh, hemiplegic? How many, how many patients have improved? To what extent they have improved? We are working on it, but I think, uh, you know, but I think uh, it is some, there is still some time left for it. So maybe in the next uh, talk, maybe next month, I'll be able to give you uh, that data to what extent they have improved but i'm going to describe the qualitative experience and qualitative experience has been very very rewarding very satisfying so major advancement of uh, transfer electricity to the brain in the modern world by was Merton and Morton, and I would be doing disservice if I don't mention the transcribe the underlying motor cortex using electricity. But obviously, it was very painful. And Bar and uh, Bark, Dr. Barker in 1985 in Sheffield, you know, first introduced this uh, TMS therapy, uh, this transcranial magnetic uh, stimulator, in which he showed that very painlessly, very safely, we can transfer magnetic fee, magnetic force transcranially into the underlying brain. This was a major, major advancement. And ever since then, we have not looked back. There have been uh, rapid strides in this field. And now we are doing uh, TMS uh, to so many patients. So this uh, treatment started in 1985. Stroke, obviously, you know, is depriving neurons uh, of blood supply. And there is death of neurons. And there is uh, it translates to functional loss. And this translates further into a huge burden to the society. And what is uh, very disappointing is neuronal repair is very limited. And the treatment options are also very limited. Once the neurons die, there's a much, my, my, there was very little we could do to help them. And then brain stimulation obviously is a big, big hope for these patients, not only to the patients, but also to the physicians, treating physicians, because we have one more uh, tool in our armamentarium, which we can use to treat, to improve the quality of life of these patients. What, what, what do these uh, present with uh, the stroke patients? Usually they come with weakness of hand, difficulty walking, spasticity, dysphagia, that is difficulty swallowing, speech disturbances, and the cognitive issues, that is, uh, you know, they cannot think properly. And obviously, a lot of patients end up in depression. There are two types of brain stimulation. One is a non-invasive and another is invasive. Obviously, I'm going to talk to you about today's non-invasive. TMS therapy and TDCS therapy is also increasingly becoming popular. 
for this study we have uh, you know we have uh, divided our brain stem uh, the stroke patients into brain stem stroke cortical stroke and subcortical stroke and age is uh, very early within one month subacute one to three months delayed is uh, three to twelve months and late is beyond that is four months after stroke and um, and you know obviously there were two groups of uh, patients in our uh, our uh, proto our um, uh, patient population one is patients who have underwent tms therapy as advised and uh, patients who did not receive tms as advised because of various reasons they did not trust the treatment they did not have the financial uh, uh, financial uh, resources to pay for this treatment uh, they found that the center uh, the tms center is very far away from uh, from where they live so because of these reasons they could not they did not receive tms therapy so we compared the results of who underwent tms therapy and who did not undergo tms therapy and we obviously recorded the adverse um, we obviously recorded uh, adverse effects if no if any and uh, follow up was done at 15 15 days one month three months and every month after that for at least one year so we did not have any adverse effects noted because we followed this uh, the safety considerations that were the guidelines given that were published uh, in the physiotherapy rehabilitation clinical neurophysiology journal in 2009 and all of our protocols were within this so we did not have any adverse events and uh, you know what uh, the abs protocol is very simple you know uh, we stimulated the we stimulated the abnormal hemisphere and we we inhibited the normal hemisphere so the normal hemisphere um, we used a frequency of one which is an inhibitory uh, stimulation and we used 1800 pulses and intertrain interval of 10 and 90 percent of motor threshold as far as the abnormal hemisphere we stimulated it so again with a used a frequency of 10 and uh, to almost all of these patients we used the left dlpfc which we believe that is uh, which is a big junction for all these subcortical motor pathways and then so we used uh, we stimulated this center also in almost all of our patients though the number of pulses were only 900 and to to you know what we learned the end results is longer is better patients who uh, did not improve uh, um, uh, and they continued their treatment they continue they they did well they did well so longer is better and second thing is um, uh, um, and the spasticity improves first walking improves next cognition improves sleep improves in all dysphagia improves and the dysphagia also improves last thing very hard to improve is the hand function that's what we realized in our uh, experience for brainstem we used uh, we used a stimulatory protocol for both the normal as well as abnormal side because we believe that the brainstem is a little different as as compared to the hemispheric uh, in uh, strokes so even m a neglect uh, also improves this is a patient who had neglect before therapy and after therapy is able to see straight this patient is a tms therapy two months after stroke he did not improve and now after our therapy he improved completely and is able to eat well and uh, this patient also has a young man who has a uh, recovered hand function because we used very early in his treatment and even a uh, review of the literature which shows that uh, there is very promising results and um, and i think you know uh, you know earlier is better we have been using uh, tms therapy for three years and uh, as we gain more experience we are uh, increasingly sure about the safety and efficacy of these treatments we have stimulated abnormal hemisphere more aggressively in most protocols they have not stimulated the abnormal hemisphere they are afraid that the patients uh, get seizures since we are doing all of our uh, treatment in a hospital settings and uh, we know that even if a patient has a seizure we'll be able to manage it uh, we are able to uh, stimulate the abnormal hemisphere very aggressively 
then uh, we used longer durations more law so a lot of patients underwent uh, 100 uh, sessions 200 sessions also they have gone up to and we have treated early you know as soon as the patient stabilizes after stroke maybe after 24 48 hours we have started the treatment so all protocols were have been done by neurosurgeons who were able to integrate imaging clinical condition to sit patient to suit patients so it is a fairly large study 1200 patients now so i coming to other neurological conditions you see this is a young man who has a, some sort of a, 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 a hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and uh, so if for these patients also we have started using them and results are very promising see his earlier he was not opening eyes now he's opening eyes and uh, even uh, we are able to hopefully wean off him off his ventilator very soon so this is an interesting case this lady with this young girl uh, young lady is from somalia and uh, she came to us in a wheelchair you see she's in a wheelchair and when i first she's the first when she told she'll be able to walk she actually didn't believe she said we were just uh, joking and we were just uh, uh, she said don't promise me so much just to make me a little better a uh, little stronger i'll be very happy i'll go back to my country but uh, we, after a few sessions of tms therapy she started walking and these are our two physiotherapists who are helping her walk this is maybe around uh, maybe after 60 sessions of uh, tms therapy so uh, you know she's able to support with support she's able to walk she had two two physiotherapists are just supporting her but she's able to walk and there's the same girl who came to in a wheelchair and she never believed and now after the now 70 80 sessions she able to walk much better so we find that tms see this uh, this uh, i i really you know this uh, uh, this patient we exactly do not know but she uh, had some amount of of um, of uh, of insult cns insult and this is a lady who had uh, multiple strokes and uh, who was on a rail tube uh, and she received almost uh, you won't believe me but uh, she was with us for four months she told she was on a rail tube she had dysphagia and you see this is a rail tube and she was uh, she was not able to eat and she told i'll only go back uh, if i'm able to eat and uh, finally we removed her rail tube she was able to eat and then she left she was admitted with us for four months and she was very patient so this is what i want to tell so you do five five sessions ten sessions may not help all of our patients you know uh, you know so you need some students who are poor at studies need a little longer coaching similarly such some brains they are not amenable for easy um, easy treatment they need to uh, they need a longer treatment so this lady received around 120 days of surgery therapy so this again you know this lady is a lady was diagnosed with a unknown disease every possible test has been done she has been uh, she has been uh, seen by at least 100 uh, neurologists and uh, she's come from an affluent family uh, and she wants good treatment so uh, they came with a lot of despair they said uh, no doctor is even even willing to try so they came to us saying that uh, if we, they, they wanted us to at least try so we said i can't promise you results but i will definitely try these are some of the images it shows some you know some demyelinating changes in the brain but uh, i included these images because every possible test was done multiple times a csf was done angiogram was done pet scan was done viral markers were done almost every possible neurological test was done for this lady still could not find out what was the disease but um, you know she is around uh, has completed around uh, 130 sessions but now obviously this picture is not capturing uh, but she has now become conscious and uh, now the family is very happy she's still with us she's still admitted with us she's receiving uh, more sessions but uh, the results are very promising and the family is very grateful to us because we took up this uh, patient when uh, nobody else was uh, willing to treat so to conclude i think uh, early interventions uh, produces better results and uh, we treat very early even within 48 hours we treat 
and i think all forms of stroke respond um, even late, late stroke the dysphagia lady that i showed earlier she came to us almost a year after her stroke and uh, if you feel that tms therapy is not helping i would encourage that you do more all patients have eventually responded in our experience and uh, looking forward um, you know to perform tms therapy in more and more early patients and i think it should be integrated along with other non invasive brain stimulations we have non invasive infrared light we have transcranial direct current stimulation transcranial um, uh, alternate current stimulation i think it needs to be all needs to be included in this sir. so i think it should be part of tms therapy should be part of uh, standard of care in stroke rehabilitation and any other uh, neurological diseases where uh, standard treatment is not uh, there so obviously you know uh, to take my conclusions a little for, for past little further we should always remember the past this uh, tms therapy is uh, you know we need to be uh, we need to um, uh, we need to be careful as uh, who is delivering our technicians we have to train them properly we have to maintain strict records and i think uh, we should not lose an opportunity this time because uh, 100 years ago uh, magnetic stimulation was one of the most more popular treatments but it lo it's lo it lost its way so this time we should not let that happen and i think it's a very very useful tool it's a safe tool and is a very efficient tool and it is a powerful tool too because it treat, it is able to treat when uh, very few other treatments are uh, meaningful so we we should continue to use therapy and um, good wishes and happy deepavali once again thank you very much for your attention